sector, whereby you just focus on what people can't do and the deficits and so on. We wanted to think about what people can do and we wanted to really listen to people with Asperger's syndrome because they must be the experts. So we began with thinking, well, what are the problems? People with Asperger's syndrome always report vulnerability in social situations, anxiety and fear. And those quotes that we hear all the time, so I don't do people. So we know that it's a problem. We were also concerned that the learning about social situations may not be particularly useful to the people with Asperger's syndrome. So we often tend to teach facial expressions. We tend to teach recognition of emotions. So these are just two examples. These are just downloaded from Google. One is worried and one is angry. But if you're somebody with Asperger's trying to learn that, they both got their head, their hands up to their faces, very difficult really to tell apart. And if you can label them as worried or you can label them as angry, how does that help you anyway? Does it tell you what the person is going to do next? Does it tell you what you should do? It's not always helpful to people with Asperger's. The other problem that we see is research repeatedly evidences a deficit of theory of mind. It's everywhere in the research literature, and yet for some reason we continue to try and focus our teaching on teaching theory of mind, even though there are uh, mixed results from this teaching. The focus on the impairments is a problem, we feel, and the fact that we, without Asperger's syndrome or autism spectrum condition, use our social understanding to inform the teaching. We don't listen to what people with Asperger's syndrome really want to know and can use. So what we did was we tried to find out what is useful to people with Asperger's syndrome in social situations. And the people that we've worked with tell us all the time that what's important is a focus on the self. So quotes like, looking after number one, how's this person going to affect me? It's a complete focus on the self, which isn't surprising considering the deficit in theory of mind. So we thought, well, what about guessing intention? How useful may it be for people to think what might happen next? So we worked with people to find out whether, whether or not people were able to guess intention and whether this was useful. And we found that people could guess intention but didn't know that they could do that. So when we were watching videos and so on, we'd say, guess what's going to happen next? People were reluctant to try to do this but were surprised when they could. So basically, guessing intention was an unrecognized but very useful ability. We then had a problem because one person said to me, but if I have to focus on people all the time, it's going to make me paranoid. But through the research, we found something blindingly obvious that people can begin to guess in an intention when they notice the unusual. And by the unusual, we mean a difference. So if um, somebody that you work with has got a different face, a different expression, you don't necessarily have to attach a mentalizing word to that, but you know there's something different. Therefore, you go on alert. And these are the words that people have used. In this situation, people have used ring the alarm bells, which makes a lot of sense. So you notice something different, and then you ring the alarm bells. You go on alert. So then a very simple system resulted from this. So number one, you notice the unusual. So you learn what's usual in a situation, you're aware of what's usual, and when something's different, you notice that. Then think, well, what's gonna happen? What's the effect on me going to be here? And the, we found that people were able to do this, not by looking at other people or reading body language or reading facial expression or anything like that. We found that people could guess intention through drawing on their own knowledge. We found that people with Asperger's have a lot of existing knowledge, but they don't think to use that unless cued in or with a self-cue like this or other people support people to know what they know. So we've done a lot of talk about supporting people to know what they know. And the focus on thinking has been really useful as well. So spot the unusual, what's going to happen? What do I know about this situation? What do I know about people in this situation? What do I know about this person? What does he usually do? What does he do, do, you do last time? And all that information has been so useful. And then, what shall I do to look after myself? That focus on the self. In both of those two, what's really important is, what are my choices? What we found was often people with Asperger's tend to think of um, one, one solution, one way of thinking, one choice. And we brought in that each time think, well, what are my choices here? What may happen? Well, what should I do? What are my choices? And developing that, as we call it, side-to-side -side thinking really supported the use of this system. So 
We feel it works because it works with the uncovered strengths of people with Asperger's syndrome, which were an ability to guess what may happen next, an ability to notice the unusual and to respond to this, and then to use their own existing knowledge relating to people and situations, rather than asking them to do something which they actually find really difficult. It's using their own resources. We feel that the system itself worked well because you can use it in any situation important to each person with Asperger's syndrome. So unlike social stories or social skills groups or whatever, where you have to learn something, plan it, and then take it out and use it, uh, people can use this when it matters to them to use it. The focus on the self was really important. So rather than worrying about what everybody else is doing, um, the, the focus on what do I need to do? What do I know? And the very simple system, one, two, three, four, gave that routine to support thinking. People who've used the system have said things like, I didn't know how much I already knew. Or, I used to see people in pure I used to see people in pure black and white, but now I see things differently. And this morning when um, somebody was talking about um, the girls and so on, I don't know if people were here this morning, they talked about the vulnerability of girls, but then feeling as though they'd been overprotected and so on. And one of the people in this research was female, and she, her great quote was, it saves having to wrap people in cotton wool when they can think for themselves. I can take the cotton wool away now. And that to me was great because it gave her a system of thinking that enabled her to feel less vulnerable in social situations. So that's it. Wonderful. Very simple. Thank you very much.